So as you may have already seen, on April the 4th, which is only just over a week away, we're going to have Phase 3 of Season of Discovery. Now, there was a big, long Phase 3 preview video that Blizzard put together, which detailed all of what we're about to discuss now. But I just want to super fast break it down. We're not going to go into too much detail at all. It's just going to be the highlights of what you need to know for Phase 3. So firstly, Sunken Temple is the new 20-player raid. Not only is it a 20-player raid, it's also going to be on a 7-day lockout. Now, because it's going to be resetting every Tuesday in NA and Wednesday in EU, on the first reset, you're going to have 5 days to be able to not lose that first first reset so level fast and get in there sunken temple is not going to be the only raid on a seven day lockout all future raids at level 60 this is including aq20 and zolgarub will also be on a seven day lockout the reasoning for this was because there is a lot of raids on the menu and it makes it a lot easier to plan if they're all resetting at the same time so you can say wednesday we're going to do aq thursday we're going to do bwl etc etc in Sunken Temple, it looks like it's going to be all the bosses that we're used to or familiar with, but with reimagined mechanics. Also, they have added an extra boss, which is a slime boss, which we're going to have absolutely no idea about, but it looks like it's roaming the hallways, so don't get eaten by it. One thing Sunken Temple is very, very well known for is the class quest that you get, and specifically for warriors with the Diamond Flask. Now, they have mentioned that the class quests are going to be there and they're going to be appropriate, as in the gear that you're going to get from them is going to be appropriate gear. So we'll see what that looks like when the data mining starts. They've changed slightly the tier tokens in Sunken Temple, where in Gnomeregon, it was just one token for everybody, but it was a specific armor piece like boots or legs or chest. Well, now, actually, they're going to split it into two. So there's going to be one token that's Warrior, Paladin, Hunter, Rogue and Shaman, and then everyone else on the other one. They did say that there's tons more loot to be able to get and there's going to be more loot dropping than you're used to in Gnomeregon, not just because it's 20 man, but also to compensate for the fact that it is on a seven day lockout. And talking about loot, dungeon loot has also had a bit of a rework, much like we saw in phase two with caster gear from places like Scarlet Monastery. They did actually show an example of this scepter from Moradon, so we can expect to see a lot more items changed and be a bit more appropriate for what, what our expectations are gear wise. There's going to be around six new runes for each class, with it being head and braces. Now, I've got to be completely honest, it's pretty much all of the runes that was data mined for phase two that didn't make it in the game. But there is a couple that took me by surprise. In the effort of keeping this quick, druids are going to get gore and improved bark skin. Hunters are going to get lock and load and focus fire. Obviously, feel free to pause this. The tool tips are on the screen if you want to actually have a look at what they do, but I'll put a separate room video out soon. Mages are going to get Deep Freeze and Bell Firebolt. And one thing they did say is if you're starting a new mage, you'll get Bell Firebolt surprisingly early. How early that is, who knows, but a dangerous one to level with. Although it looks like it's going to absolutely chunk. Warriors are going to get Taste for Blood, Sword and Board and Gladiator Stance. Now, Gladiator Stance is a really cool one because it actually only lasted one expansion. Like throughout the entirety of WoW's history, it was in Warlords of Draenor and then it was gone for Legion. So actually having this back in Season of Discovery, yeah, it's pretty cool. Warlocks are going to get Pandemic and Summon Felguard. Shamans are going to get Mental, Dexterity and Riptide. Rogues are going to get Honor Amongst Thieves, which is a really cool one and also cut to the chase. Priests are going to get Pain and Suffering and Surge of Light. Paladins are getting Improved Sanctuary for tanking and then Wrath for, well, pretty much anything else. And they're the runes. As I say, we will go into a lot more detail both on the podcast and in a future video, but just want to get through this quick. They're also adding a new six set PvP set. Not sick, not like sick, bruv. I mean six, the number six. There's six items. It's a six set PvP set. Sounded exactly the same. So at rank five, six, and seven, you're actually going to start getting real PvP gear. Where at the moment, it's basically just PvE gear and, and there's specific like high stam pieces from PvE that you're trying to get to then go on PvP. Now you're going to have an actual PvP set to get. Whether this is a good idea or not, I don't know, because I've got to be honest, some of these bits look really strong even for PvE to me. There's going to be no new PvP event. STV is still going to be the level 50 PvP zone. Instead, they're upgrading the currency earned during the event, which is going to now be Massacre Coins. And as you can expect, there's going to be new level 50 items. We did see some of them. There was like a thrown weapon specifically for warriors. There was an actual crossbow for hunters as well, which looks really strong. But overall, there's just a ton more items to get. And yeah, I'm a little bit sad that there's no PvP event, but I had a feeling that this one might stick around until level 60. 
Oh, the really, really good news and something I've been complaining about for weeks is there is actually repeatable PvE content. They're adding something called Nightmare Incursions. Now, they're big portals, much like the Emerald Dream portals, where the world bosses that you run around and kill in, well, at level 60. But there's four of these portals. There's one in Duskwood, one in Ashenvale, one in Hinterlands, and one in Feralus. And you can jump in and earn reputation with a new faction called the Emerald Wardens, which of course brings new rewards, including a PvP set not quite as good as the ranking pvp set but probably still going to be pretty decent now you can do this repeatable pve content all the way from 25 to 50. how much xp you're going to get in there and how many times you can do it is obviously unknown but apparently you can do it solo or there's going to be some that are too difficult and you'll need a group so i'm assuming up to five players it's not going to be raid content but i would imagine maybe some of the bosses that are in there require five people but you can go in solo and farm reputation now, I don't know. I'm just guessing. There'll also be quest chains taking you into these incursions, as well as quests taking you into Sunken Temple for the new crafted gear, which we did get a little preview of the crafted gear. And there's some crafted gear where you don't require to be inside the nightmare. And then there's some what I've got bonuses if you are. So some of these items are going to be more powerful in incursions or more than likely in Sunken Temple as well. Whereas there's other things that can be made that don't matter. You can, you know, they're going to be powerful everywhere. Now, they acknowledged the problem that in Phase 2 with crafting gear, it was a bit of a gold sink. Now, Blizzard did say, you know, they think gold sinks are good for the game, but this time around, the crafting recipes for the professions are more or less free, is what Nora said. So, that's good news at least, because it was very expensive to start getting these on alts in Phase 2, to be fair. So, that's a good change. And while we're talking about professions, you're going to be able to get your professions to 300 now, and you will be able to do the specializations as well, such as armor smith or weapon smith or dragon scale level working, tribal level working, all that kind of thing. But they're also adding the alchemy specializations. So how these work is when you're crafting potions, you've got a chance of procking extra potions, as well as if you was making flasks, you've got chances of procking extra flasks. Now, if Season of Discovery is the first version of World of Warcraft you're playing, this did get added in TBC where you had to pick between Ocean Master, Elixir Master or Transmute Master. So I'm assuming it's just going to be basically that. But that is really good and I am Alchemy so I'm going to take big advantage of that no doubt. Now one of the biggest ones that everyone was extremely happy about is the fact that Dual Spec is now going to be in the game. Again, we don't know exactly how we're going to get it. We know we're getting it from this funkily dressed dwarf. And there's something else that this dwarf does as well that they alluded to. But again, we don't know what that is at the moment. But yes, you'll be able to get dual spec. And again, we have no idea how much of a gold sink it's going to be, but I can guarantee it's going to be a little bit expensive. If you wondered about world buffs, Sunken Temple will be bringing a new world buff, but it'll also be bringing raid consumables as well. Very much like the Zanza elixirs during Zolgarab, where you trade in items that you get from the raid or consumables. You'll be doing exactly the same thing. And Josh Greenfield did say that these are going to be very powerful and you definitely are going to want to be taking them to the raids. Much like the Black Fathom Deep's world buff not working at level 40, so you couldn't use the Gnomeragon buff and the BFD buff, the Gnomeragon buff is not going to work at level 50. So you will only have to get the one buff and Darkmoon Fair or your consumables, all that kind of thing. Also, if you thought I'm going to get ahead of the curve and grind loads of Marks of Honor for XP or troll necklaces from Hinterlands or Waste Wonder Pouches from Tanneris, save your time because they are not going to give XP. The only slight advantage you can get is by farming loads of coins to be able to get the honor tokens from the STV event. Those are going to work, but only for two weeks. After two weeks, they'll be gone. Because they did say they didn't mind people getting a bit of a leg up and get a bit of a head start on the ranking when Phase 3 launches. And then when it comes to XP, the 50% XP buff is going to be active all the way to level 50, which completely surprised me, I've got to be honest. But then between 1 and 39, you'll still have the 100% XP buff. So level 40 to 50 with a 50% XP buff as standard is going to be a lot less painful. I know it's only 10 levels, but still, those 10 levels can be quite time consuming. And then if you wanted to park yourself outside Gnomeragon on launch night on April the 4th, Gnomeragon will give a good chunk of XP, the same way Black Fathom Deeps did when you was level 25. They also did say that the new Nightmare Incursions are going to be a good way to get XP and potentially break up the monotony of, let's say, you're out questing, it's getting a bit frustrating, or you're just getting a bit bored questing. You can jump in a Nightmare Incursion and get XP that way as well. How much XP it's going to give? who knows but we'll find out soon and i would say that's everything we took away from the preview as i say i'm going to get another video out looking at the runes in a bit more detail and 
I'd say that will probably come out in the next day or two. But if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe. Don't worry, I've not forgot about Season of Discovery. I'm making a lot of cat content at the moment, but that's purely because up until this point, there's not really been a lot to talk about with Season of Discovery and cat hype. Let's go. Anyway, I'll see you on the next one.